There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the native Hal in the building! Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining. We really appreciate it. We know you're insanely busy right now. Oh, that's a lovely couch. There you're, we go. You're insanely busy at the moment. Uh, first of all, congratulations on winning Sumerian Records No Cover. Uh, if you guys could properly, could you introduce yourself for those that may not know who you are? Yeah, scoot in closer, bro. There you go. Scoot in. Let us see your handsome face. Let us know whereabouts okay, so in the world you are right now and plug anything you'd like. Um, my name is Alex Holy Cross. I play guitar and sing for the Native Howl. I'm uh, Jake Sawicki. I play banjo and sing backups. <laughs> Hell yeah. Where are you guys are at right now? Where, where are you right now in the world? Uh, we're in Germany. Germany? Really? really? It's amazing. Yeah, we on no, Airbnb just, right now? No, we. Uh, it's actually an inside joke on our podcast that we do every Tuesday night called the Howlcast. We just—I I don't know how the joke started, but we just say we're uh, we're broadcasting from an undisclosed location in Germany, uh, two miles outside of the Autobahn. That's why that's accounts for all the traffic. Right? Say less. Gotcha. Hell yeah. No, we're no, we're in, we're in fucking Michigan, man. Cool. So you must be <laughs> Wolverine fans or Spartan fans. I went to MSU. Okay, cool. Hell yeah, excellent. Jake, Jake played. Yeah. Jake, Jake played football at MSU. Did you really? What position? I, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I was a, a running back in uh, in in high school. I just walked on with my buddy and then uh, walked off. And so, <laughs> so the the chicks were like, the banjo's cooler than running the football, apparently. <laughs> Yo, it looks there. nice as hell over there. What's the temperature like over there? Um, it's actually raining. <laughs> really? We can't, can't tell. Yeah, we can't tell. Yeah, there's fire behind it, you. What? It's, all drizzle, yeah. it's literally <laughs> raining on us right now. But besides that, the weather's great. And we're just, uh, like I was telling you guys, and thank you for uh, your grace that you've given us the past couple days. But we've been, like, slammed with work, getting ready for our tour coming up with Black Label Society and with uh, Jared James Nichols. And then we're doing a month with Airborne from Australia after that. And, uh just put out our sons of destruction video i guess i'll get Excuses. all the plugs out now yeah there you go. knock them all uh, out tours coming tours coming up with black label society starting on tuesday the 30th in north carolina we do a week with uh black label society and uh jared james nichols then we come back from new orleans for one day we're home for one day and then we drive out to new york city and start our uh, u.s and canada uh tour with airborne those aussies those wild aussies the and uh our sons of destruction video just came out uh through sumerian records who we just signed with after winning the no cover show so congrats there's our plugs hell Thank yeah you. congrats on winning by the way uh right. do you guys are you guys still friends with any of the bands from the show maybe night spins i imagine you saw them a couple more times than yeah. other bands yeah yeah it was weird man because like when we when we filmed no cover it was still in like the throes of covid so it was very locked down there wasn't a lot of interfacing with anyone let alone like the other bands but uh you're you're exactly right the night spins we got the most face time with and they're the sweetest guys in the world and very charismatic and, and just a pipe hit band so uh yeah but we, we liked everybody that we came across in the limited capacities in which we uh, dealt with them but uh yeah the night spins they're uh they're they're coming to uh detroit in december and we're trying to link them up with our buddies the gasoline gypsies uh, an awesome band from michigan so uh yeah night spins rock and people should listen to them because they're sweet and good guys to boot hell yeah of uh of all the tour dates that you guys have and there's a lot of them coming up you guys are gonna be busy is there one that you've circled on your calendar that you're kind of like i really am looking forward to this one because if we have some some time to just walk around this city, like this is the one I really want to go and just check out. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> You're just jumping in the van and just just drive. <laughs> I'm no louder than life. Yeah, like, fuck. Damn, yeah, the louder than life festival in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we got. Uh, we were originally on Saturday. Um, slotted to play on Saturday, September 24th. Because of the Airborne tour, we got moved to Sunday the 25th. Um, we were originally on like the heavy metal day, 
like we were playing with uh with slipknot. With, with slipknot and lamb of god and also Damn. our you know our touring partners which we were honored to tour with Gwar. um but we got moved to sunday because of the tour dates and um we're honored to be playing the same day as Alice in Chains. So that's going to be like us. Or we're just going to be kids like in a candy store. Yeah, like our all-time favorite. We're playing on the same day as Alice in Chains. Yeah. Actually. yeah, yeah, that's wicked. It's going to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then like, and also one date that's sticking out to us is uh, the final date of the Black Label run in New Orleans. The NOLA show with, yeah. with Black Label and Jared James Nichols is going to be fucking wild. That's going to be a party Hammered for sure. That night. Party. Yeah, really? the Can you t- oh. the Troubadour? Oh yeah, the and also the, the and then the final show of the tour on October 11th ends at the Troubadour in LA, where we won no cover. So hold on a second, nice. October 11th. I'm gonna make a note and try yeah. to make this this gig. Hold on a second, Troubadour. Hell yeah! For how? Okay. Can you guys explain to me how you were able to perform the national anthem for the Chicago Bulls game and explain that experience to me? I did my research. That was a wild. That was a wild. Yeah. That was a wild night. Uh, we'll we'll uh, being uh, being quite frank. Yeah. Uh, our manager, his name is Frank Masterlaz um, of FM Management, and to be quite honest, they uh, that w- this is one of the many times that FM Management has come through for us, and they got us that gig through their connections and we had the honor of playing the uh national anthem as you said at uh the united center in yeah Chicago. it was yeah was... Hey, two questions did you get yes. tickets yeah. to be able to watch the game and how nervous were you doing that and what players did you meet uh well uh, question what, what i'll start i'll go in reverse order what players do we meet I have no idea because I don't <laughs> watch sports. So we, I could. I, don't know I was hoping to meet Michael Jordan, but I hear tell he's playing baseball. Now. Um, <laughs> so I was, I was disappointed by that. That made me sad. But uh, uh, the first question, like Jake said, stressful, man. Like when we were at that point, we're using an in-ear system now. But up until at that point, we were still like wedge masters. We were using the wedges on the front of the stage. And like we weren't used to the whole in ear experience, and they used an in ear system, and the shit was not working. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, it was not working. Like, right up until we walked on stage, if you, we have a live video on our Facebook that is like documents the whole thing. <laughs> nice. We were walking down the tunnel, and I just start freaking out. I'm like, my shit is not working. Guys, I can't. That's a hear big anything. deal. <laughs> yeah, no. Did you get yeah, to watch dude, the game, playing. and where'd they see you? Yeah, we got some nose. <laughs> at, least, at least you got to watch the game, though. At least you they got to watch the game. They gave you tickets, though, but where did, where did you sit, though? The like, nosebleeds. Oh, they said nosebleeds. That's yeah, fucked yeah, up. The, the way up the top. Had, so, let's, let's... We still hung out in a bar. No, it was, it, was, it, was, it was super sweet. It was a really cool experience, and we got to hang out with all of our, our cohorts and colleagues at FM Management. Um, nice. At the game. It was super fun, man. And they, they treated us right before, too. I mean, we had, like, our own green room and there was like a buffet food place oh I mean, nice awesome. yeah hell yeah yeah i mean like when we were walking by the players of which none i, I we I, we don't know any of their fucking names but like we were walking by these guys and it was like what's that guy's name like akeem Olajuwon or something it was like i he's he played he played in like that no he played in the 80s i don't know kareem anything. jabbar but it just seemed like yeah, that was who I was trying to think yeah. of, Kareem Jabbar. It was like it was like just a hundred Kareem Jabbars just walking by, <laughs> like a foot and a half taller than me. I'm like, what's up, dude? Yeah, I'm like, it's different seeing you. them at the right. compared to on TV. I just walked, I just walked right through their legs. <laughs> <laughs> we, I do want to play the Sons of Destruction, like a little bit of the, of that video, but um, I I want to ask a two part question. You guys mentioned that you're, I mean, basically a lot of the bands you're going on tour with. Are are fairly heavier than you guys. How is the reception for for your guys' style of music? And also, second part of the question: Rewind back to the first practice. What what inspired the metal bluegrass hybrid? Okay, so Thrashgrass started in 2016 at a festival called Wheatland. Wheatland is a music festival in northern Michigan in a city called Remus, and. Uh, Long story short, um, we were at that festival. We saw some bluegrass bands play and um, drinking some whiskey, taking some mushrooms and thought, uh, had this epiphany. Like I said, I know cover that like thrash metal, thrash metal and uh, and bluegrass are like virtually the same thing. They're both high tempo, high energy, uh, high BPM, melodic, 
precise, um, aggressive. And uh, we thought, why don't we just run those cars together in a head-on collision? And that's how Thunderhead came about. We wrote Thunderhead that night. And then that next week, Jake uh, said that song needs a banjo. And I argued and said, I don't think so, man. I wanted to have two <laughs> guitars and Jake fought, fought me on it. And he was like, no, man, it needs a banjo. And I was like, fine, put a banjo in it. And then it ended up making the whole genre. He was right. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, and then you're... And then your first question about b being on bills with heavier bands, I think we're we're heavy just in a in an uh, I guess like a, a different particular way. We we occupy a different sonic uh, part of the sonic spectrum of heaviness. So heaviness you usually equate to uh, the distortion of the guitar or the down tuning or the lyrical content, and we still have the dark lyrical murderous content, but right. sonically it it comes through in a different timbre than you're used to with acoustic guitars, with the banjo. Our, a, a lot of our heaviness comes from our rhythm section. And, and I think the, there's an intensity to it live too, where yeah. like we're playing acoustic instruments and you can really hear and see everyone playing these things to make the sound and we're jumping around and uh, crowds, crowds, I mean, they ate it up mm -hmm. on, on Guar and, and uh, with Clutch. Yeah. But like, I mean. Yep. Hell yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The let's great. let's give people a taste of what exactly we're talking about here and show them what i'm like to refer to as the mini movie that is sons of destruction yeah so uh i imagine um you guys had some form of of offers prior to submitting to no cover as far as labels go is sumerian one that you kind of already had in mind and then it just, it just worked out perfectly or was just a shot in the dark hey let's just let's just try this contest see what happens and then just just wing it or did you kind of already have Sumerian on your radar well we always respected what they did um and the, the uh, and like the integrity they have with their artists but we were always an independent band we got offers from bigger labels um in the yesteryears when we would have videos go viral but it just so worked out where Sumerian you know putting on the no cover competition was perfect for us and they're such a good fit um they've given us such creative freedom but given us like the assets and like the the industry muscle and the know-how and the team necessary to make a project like this work. So it's uh it it literally it's a dream come true. It couldn't have worked out any better. We're so happy with, with how uh, all this is rolling out. It only took ten years. It only took a decade to get yeah. to where, yeah, put the work where in. we are. The hard work is I mean, it, it definitely paid off though for sure. And, I just and, and we're really happy for you guys. I sent a picture to our mod chat. Do you know, Alex, you look like Chris Jericho from like the younger days. Is that your dad? You know, peop pe people love telling me that I look like dudes who aren't me. Like, <laughs> I swear, like on God, every night on tour, they're like, is anyone like it's to the point now where like people are coming. I swear to God, on like the last couple of nights in the Gore show, they were coming up and going like, hey, has anybody ever told you that you look like and they'd stop? And then I'd go. What do you get? And then go. And then it's someone that doesn't look anything okay. like you, <laughs> and you're like, "What the? What are you yeah. talking about?" The most J by far, J Aquaman. Jason yeah, Jason yeah. Momoa. Oh, every night, every, night. every, every fucking night. Nah, Chris Jericho's your real hey, dad, dude. I can see it. <laughs> that's a, I appreciate that because that's like a new it. one. That's a new yes. one. Hey, I'm also get when I shave my beard shorter, I get the they say the dude from uh, uh, Yellowstone. I've never watched that show, but they say you look okay. like Casey from Yellowstone. I'm like, well, I guess I'll have to check it out. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, people, I, I've yeah. seen it once, twice, but, uh, but uh, okay, Chris. Chris I'm sorry. Jericho, he likes. That. Yeah, Chris Jericho, yeah, the, the wrestler. Thank you. A fo and he's the singer of Fozzie oh, yeah. too. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, by the way, uh, by, by the by, I'd like to say we really, uh, our whole band really enjoyed your uh, your guys's review of the Suns video. It was very honest and. We loved how you were pointing out that why the hell are they zombies? What the hell is this coming from? What's going on? And that you acknowledge the progression of the story and the and like the thematic progression. So we appreciate your your guys's review. It was very uh, well done, and we, thank you. It was oh, really yeah. cool. My pleasure. No problem. No no problem at all. Uh, gentlemen, I know you're you're kind of time strapped today. Uh, we'll just ask a couple more, and we'll let you go. Um, we don't care. You're staying out in the rain for like another hour. <laughs> Get used to it. I'll, yeah, yeah, it is starting to drizzle. So yeah, fire a few more off. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll ask my final one. Off. I'll ask my final one. Um, I ask every artist that we have on this show the exact same question. What is a piece of musical advice that somebody in the industry has given you that was kind of like an eye opener or 
the worst mistake you ever made as a band that you don't want any starting up band to make? And you can't say this interview. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that, that first question is, that's a really good question. Yeah. Let me, I gotta let that, uh, yeah, I gotta, yeah, it's gotta. Oh, the smoke's coming out really of his good. ears. You made him think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why, but yeah, blowing the dust in the rust. <laughs> my mind. Um, yeah, you know what? It's like a piece of advice. So one thing that I'll, I'll say mine, and this is from years and years ago, um, when our original uh, manager, his name was Don, and um, him and his team, they had a rehearsal with us. And I'm talking back in like 2013. And Dave and I still talk about this. Um, but um, he, had the, he had the advice of if you're, when you're performing, if you feel like you're giving 90%, you're really giving 45%. If you feel like you're giving 100, it looks to the crowd and to the audience like you're giving 50. So oversell, lean in, like lean into what you are. And if you feel, if you feel insane that you look crazy live and you feel like it's too much, you're probably just right. Yep. I like Tax. that. I like that. Same question for you, sir. Me. Yeah, you. The only other person there. Hello. <laughs> okay. I, uh, hello. Me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> you talking? You talking to me? If you can't tell, I'm the yeah, asshole of the two know. of us. <laughs> Noted. I, I think uh, my advice to other bands would be: start bands with your friends, with your best friends, because you know it, it's you're in the band with them all the time, you know and. And we never have issues. Like I see these other bands and they're always fighting, and it's hard to get along. With treat each other like treat shit. Treat each other like shit. Like stupid. It's so much easier when you're just traveling and yeah. having a good time, and everyone's easy going. We've known each other for years. Like start start bands with your friends. Yeah, that's sage. <laughs> sage <laughs> advice. Yeah, because we are because our band is a, is a family. That's what they said. I, the judges on No Cover said like. You guys have known each other for a while, haven't you? And we were like, yeah, since we were 15, over half our lives. And they said it shows. So, yeah, exactly. Start start bands with your friends. I got my last quick one. Um, to get to know you guys better, when you're not touring or doing music, what is like a hobby that you go to on your downtime? We don't have downtime. Yeah, no. All right, well, what's Jake, a hobby Jake, other than Jake, music? The, the, the Howlcast. The Howlcast is, is, I, is yeah. one of the hobbies. You know, okay, that's yeah, mine. That, there, mine's the Howlcast, yep. Okay, and then still podcasting. Jake's, yeah. Jake's a dad. Yeah, I'm, so. a, yeah, I'm a dad, but I would say that's my hobby. But I used to be really into, like, I, I used to be into snowboarding and wakeboarding. On, Ooh. That was probably my biggest hobby. And running the rock through the linemen. Yeah. Can't forget that part. Yeah, <laughs> Running right. Run the rock, Run the rock <laughs> baby, for the Spartans. Hell yeah. Last question. In indica, sativa, or or hybrid? Uh, nerve pain medication. <laughs> Fair. Fair. I'd say I'm a sativa, man. Cool. Hell yeah. Rockstar or monster think, energy? <laughs> bang. Yeah. Bang. Because it's got the creatine. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Well, gentlemen, safe travels on the road. I know you guys are, are, are hustling, working hard. Sumerian's got you guys all over the place, which is fantastic. We're happy for you guys. You totally deserved winning the show. You killed it. Um, the, the Sons of Destruction song and video is amazing. And uh, I'm going to do my best to make that Troubadour show. I have to cancel an upcoming interview to pull it off, but I'm going to do my best to actually make that show um, just to support you guys and bring out a small army with me if I can. But for real, stay safe on the road. You guys absolutely rule. And I appreciate you doing this for real. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having us. This was fun. We yeah, fun. we appreciate you, and hopefully we see you in Los Angeles. Los Angeles, baby, the native how. Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Woo. Cheers.